Joe Shane here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Joe? I'm great, guys. Thanks for having me. I was not sure if I was on or not. I was going to start laughing when you started telling that story. That's it's true. <laughs> it's the truth. I, I, Joe, I looked around. I'm like, is there anybody here, you know, to confirm <laughs> to confirm this book? <laughs> It's just like, uh, and he got up, and he got up to go to the front desk to find out why <laughs> why his spa treatment yeah. didn't start five minutes early. That legitimately happened, yeah. man. That le- uh, that's awesome. That that's awesome. Le- yeah. did, how did you get your start? Who gave you your start in the NFL, Joe? So I did thing. a. I went to DePaul University in Indiana to Division three mm-hmm. uh, school and played ball there, and they had this program called the Winter Term uh, where. Freshman year, you stay on campus. Sophomore, junior, senior year, you can do internships, study abroad, whatever it may be. So I did an internship during that three-week period Mm -hmm. with the Carolina Panthers in the ticket office. And the season was over. There wasn't a lot going on. It was a small department at the time. Yes, sir. And when I was getting ready to to leave after that three-week internship, they said, hey, you know, if if you're interested in being in football and you want to work training camp, we'll get you in touch with our operations assistant, uh, his name's Brandon Bean. Oh, you know, boy. You want to do that. I huh. said, okay. So reached out to Brandon Bean, and, uh, you know, whatever that is, 22 years later, we're still still great friends. So <laughs> that's uh, that's how it worked out. Then I went and did a summer, summer uh, internship with him in operations and then went back and finished my senior year of college. And then, you know, right out of college, started with the Panthers as a scouting assistant. And then that's how you, you know, about eventually wound up in Buffalo assistant GM there. And now the, the general manager of the New York giants, Joe Shane here uh, on the rich Eisen show. Um, our radio audience has returned. So let me just jump into the, obviously the the story of the day. What is your relationship with Saquon Barkley right now, Joe? Yeah. Relationship's good. Again, we, uh, when we started negotiations, we actually, uh, started during the bye week and, you know, I brought him up to my office and just said, Hey, you know, you've been in the league for five years. You really haven't been through this. This is the business part of it. And that's exactly what it is. This is business. None of it is personal. And you just have to understand, um, this is something you haven't been through and just always understand it's business and not personal. So, um, anytime we talk throughout the process over the nine and a half months, um, you know, I would remind him of that. Remember this and he, and he understood it. He's very mature. He's a great teammate. Uh, we're happy he's here. We have a good relationship. And again, we, we worked hard both sides, try to get something done and we just couldn't, you know, find common ground in terms of a landing spot. And that's okay. You know, there's a lot of time deals don't get done, but our relationship's good. He's came in, he's been a pro. Uh, he wasn't this, here this spring, which is, you know, the, that's an optional time for the players. And he came in in outstanding shape and he looked very good out there. Well, I'm sure you're aware of the national conversation around running backs getting paid. You're just, you and uh, Saquon were just one general manager and terrific running back pairing uh, of many that seems to be at odds or in a standoff. And obviously your standoff is complete at the moment in time. But uh, what is your philosophy on paying running backs and the general sense of it in the NFL right now, Joe? Yeah, and every team is different. You know, 31 other teams have their process. We we have our process, and we came up with, you know, we we, we did a lot of deals this off season, and, and you know, we're confident in, you know, our process and how we come up with, you know, player contracts and values, and, and 31 other teams have different ways they do it. And then you got the agencies, you know, the agents of the players, they, they have their process, and each agency is different, um, whether it's Rock Nation, CAA, Athletes First, whoever you're dealing with, they have their different process, how they come to uh, values on players. So, um, you know, it's a diverse group of thought in terms of, you know, values on certain players. And, again, we, we went through the process with Saquon. And, you know, again, I said at my press conference we were at peace. And um, we just couldn't come to common ground and, and bridge the gap in our differences. And, you know, I can't really speak on the rest of the league and, and what they're doing. But, you know, again, I'm, I'm confident in our process and, you know, how we come up with those comps. Okay. And just a couple more questions on this because, obviously, there's more going on with your team than just your running back. Joe Shane, GM here on the Rich Eisen Show. Just from my seat, and uh, I've said it, so I'll say it to you now that you're on the phone here with me, is I don't, I don't understand with somebody of his stature and his – his good nature and everything that he does for the team, you know, if it's just a couple million dollars here and there, and I know it's not my money and I know I'm not in charge of a cap, but I, I, I just don't understand what, what a couple of million dollars might, might mean. Was it, were you that close Joe? And this, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's funny you say a couple million dollars. We, you know, I've been in this situation before where a player says that what's it, what's a couple million dollars, you know, it means more to me than to the franchise. What's it, you know, you got this big cap number and then, um, you know, say fast forward a month later, 
and there's a player that we'd like to sign that's two million dollars and we can't so you know every dollar you give somebody you can't give it somebody else and and that's not you know that's not necessarily the case here but um, you do have to operate under a salary cap. I've said it before. I wish we didn't, and you could pay everybody. That would be that would be awesome. But uh, there's different rules that we have to operate under, and you know, you're you're. It's not just about one player. You're trying to build a team with with 53, and you know, trying to manage that the best way you can. And then just uh, with with you and and Saquon uh, about moving forward here again. What we're did you did you see when he was on a podcast? I guess uh, the week uh, in which uh, this all went down. It was recorded uh, days before, and he was wondering if uh, if he's just not show up and hold out. And it just seems so out of character for him. And I'm just wondering what you, as somebody who is, in fact, in the business deal, seeing how personal he's taking it, how you took that, Joe Shane, that podcast. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I, I didn't watch I didn't watch the whole thing. I saw snippets of it um, from a couple of people. But really, it, you know, this has been a long process, and it's you know a lot of people have their opinions on – the running back market, Saquon, myself, the organization. And, you know, what I found was most helpful is just tune out the outside noise. And we had to do what's best for the organization. And I have a, I have a talented staff, uh, personnel staff, football administration staff, and you just tune out the the outside noise. And, and that's why I didn't listen to the entire podcast. Cause again, these things can get emotional, you know, as long as they went on and it's, it's personal in terms of what he wants to, you know, in terms of how he wants to do what's best for his family and you know I understand that, so um, you know I didn't watch it, and I kind of tuned out a lot of the outside noise and the rumors on you know what was offered, what wasn't offered, because um, we knew the truth. You know Saquon and I both went through it for the nine and a half months and his representatives, and um, we knew what offers were out there. We knew um, where we moved to. We knew what, what they wanted, and you know again just for me it was tuning out the outside noise and sticking with you know my conviction new york giants general manager joe shane here on the rich eisen show and lost amongst this conversation is the fact that you acquired a big time playmaking tight end in darren waller who i love i mean his story is remarkable and obviously what he can bring to this equation uh when did you first realize that you could acquire darren waller Joe, walk me through that one. Yeah, I um, it was probably early March. Um, had a talk with Dave Ziegler, the, the GM of of the Raiders, and we kind of talked through, you know, some guys that may be available. And you know, I asked about him, and he said, "Well, I might might listen." And um, we continued to communicate up until um, you know, the, the trade was consummated. But yeah, he was a guy that's you know, getting that position. He's, he's talented. He's he's almost a unicorn in terms of his size, his athleticism. You know, he, he would be a you know one of the best receivers on a lot of a lot of teams. Um, so yeah, good addition for us. He, he's been an outstanding uh, person, worker, you know, leader out there, and you know he's he's strung together some pretty good days here at, at camp so far. So what is your expect expectation level for him, Joe? The rest of uh, your staff? Oh, boy. There? Yeah, I don't I don't want to put any again. He's, he's still trying to pick up the offense and blend in with the group. So we're going. Um, you know, day by day and still figuring out what his strengths are and how we want to utilize him. But again, I expect him to be a, a big part of the offense, you know, however the coaches decided to utilize him. And um, again, he's, he's shown some really good flashes out there so far. So I'm excited to see him once we get into the regular season. And then uh, let's talk about um, the kids that you have on this team right now. Um, the one that just jumps off at the screen at you is uh, the kid Hyatt from Tennessee. What, how much do you think he's going to contribute in his first year there, Joe? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's had strung together. You know, he's another guy that the last three or four days has has really elevated his game. And again, these guys are young, specifically the rookies, and they have a lot to learn. Um, learn how to be pros, how we do things, our process, our culture. So he, he's done a good job. He's come a long way from the spring, and we we expect him to you know to continue to mature and and, and learn the plays and get in the playbook so again he, he's continued to do that since he returned over the summer and you know i think is you know we've seen the uh returns on the field so again he's a he's a vertical threat you know he can run routes he can stretch the field he's got excellent hands and you know we've seen all that in practice this far yeah and and you know obviously this this team um is is coming off of a playoff win what did that mean do you think obviously you you your your coach that you hired and brian dable you go way back with it to to Buffalo, winning coach of the year, and Daniel Jones um, winning a playoff game. 
How, how does that, in your estimation, affect wins and losses potentially this year? Joe? Yes, yeah, specifically for Dave's and I, just when you're trying to implement, you know, a new new process and, you know, culture in terms of how you want to do things, how we want to practice, how we want to approach the game week, to see positive returns early on, you know, I think that was important to say, hey, okay, what we're doing here, you know, these guys are stressing and then we can see the results and we're able to get off a fast, fast start because of that. And then, you know, fast forward to the playoff game, I think it was important for some of our younger players. I mean, it just, they haven't won a lot around here, you know, before um, last season. So I think it was important for those guys to play in big games, meaningful games in December, January. And I think moving forward, you know, if we're fortunate enough to be in that situation again, they've been there, they've experienced it. They've, they've been on the road in a playoff game in a hostile environment and they know what that looks like. And, you know, we've got several players that returned from last year's team. And if we're fortunate to, enough to be in that, that position again, I think it'll play dividends. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions for Joe Shane, the GM of the New York Giants here. Give me your favorite Kayvon Thibodeau story when you were kicking the tires on him, thinking of drafting him, going through the evaluation process, maybe meeting with you and the staff there. You got a good one for, for Thibodeau? Yeah. No, we, we flew out there to uh, – we were actually in the owner's meetings. I was down and they were in uh, West Palm – two years ago at the breakers and he was having his pro day. So, you know, I had to, I flew from there out to Eugene to work him out. And sometimes when we do this, we take players to dinner with a, Hey, you, you pick the dinner, you set everything up, get the time, the reservation. You know, that's part of the interview process. Can, can they do this stuff on their own? As simple as that sounds. And uh, he took us to a Korean barbecue place, which mm-hmm. I had never been to Korean barbecue before. So I thought okay. that was a, of all the places in Eugene, Oregon, that that's where we decided to eat dinner. So, have you been? I have not. Uh, I have not been to Eugene. Um, that would have been an interesting choice right there for sure. Yeah, so they bring out like the raw meat. You cook it. Okay. Uh, you cook it yourself right there and, you know, amongst the group. And, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a fun experience. I think you, you, uh, you must learn a, a lot about a, a player around a Korean barbecue cooking your own meat, you know, on a, st- on, a, on a rock there in Eugene, Oregon, I'd imagine, you know? Yeah, yeah, we did. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. He's quite the character. He's quite. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a great kid. He's a great kid. He's got a big personality. I love him. Right, and then your favorite Dable story. Give me one of them too, Joe. Do me that favor, and I'll let you oh, go for God. the rest of the day here. A Brian Dable story that tells me something about him I might not know. How does that sound? Joe Shane, what do you got for me about <laughs> oh, Brian Dable? So many different directions here. Um, maybe not me? such a great. Uh, this is. A, I would just say Mondays after our victories, we as a staff, coaching and personnel, we find ourselves around six thirty, seven o'clock on Monday nights, down in the cafeteria, mm-hmm. eating dinner and telling Dayball stories about him basically blacking out on the headset and. <laughs> Um, during the game time, whether it's ripping a player, ripping a staff member, he just goes off and he's, he's self-aware. So he's, he's sitting down there and he, he'll laugh at himself the next day on some of the stuff that he says. I mean, that, that would be the ultimate. If you could, you could mic our staff and have a reality show on the sideline of some of the stuff that goes on in conversations and, and everything else, it would be, it'd be a good reality show or a good chance to mic those guys up. It'd be entertaining for I, sure. I think NFL films can accommodate you, Joe. You know, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, and he won't do that. <laughs> that well, that's, there's I, a reason. That's what there's your co-tenants are up to, obviously, or your your uh, yeah. your neighbors. Um, I, you know, I grew up in New York City. Um, uh, you know, a long time New York sports guy, Joe, and it's rare to see the Jets kind of get more headlines than the Giants. Do you dig that? Do you like that? You're under the radar a little bit, even yeah, though you I'm went okay to the playoffs. That. I'm okay with that. You are, yeah, huh? Like I said, like I said, yeah, we're just. We're worried about getting better each day and, Mm -hmm. you know, taking care of ourselves and controlling what we can control. And that's, that's what we're trying to do right now. And we'll continue to lay under the radar and, you know, just keep building good days together. All right, Joe, I appreciate you taking the call and coming on here and chopping up, uh, you know, the, the conversation I've been having a lot here. Um, There were in there times I sat at the mic saying, I don't know what the giants are doing. I really don't know what they're doing. So maybe I was some of the noise you were tuning out, Joe, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, Hopefully you're not saying that too much more. <laughs> okay. Thanks again, Joe. Appreciate it. Uh, good All luck right, against great. the Cowboys right. week one, and we'll chat again soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks. You got it. That's Joe Shane, general manager of the New York football Giants. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 